الشيطان اللعين الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم حسبنا الله ونعم الوكيل نعم المولى ونعم النسير نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونشكره ونسلي ونسلم على حبيب إله العالمين حافظ سره ومبلغ رسالته الرسول المسدد المصطفى الأمجد المحمود الأحمد أبي القاسم محمد وبآله الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين صلوات الله عليهم أجمعين ولعنة الله على أعدائهم ومنكر فضائلهم وغاسب حقوقهم من الأولين والآخرين من الآن إلى كيام يوم الدين أما بعد فقد قال الله تبارك وتعالى في كتابه المجيد وكلامه الكريم وقوله الحق بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ادعوا إلى سبيل ربك بالحكمة والموعظة الحسنة آمنا بالله وصدق الله العلي العظيم صلوا على محمد وآل محمد We have been discussing about the advices of our sixth holy man and tonight we shall be discussing the fourth advice of our sixth holy man the first advice was that if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the guarantor of your sustenance then why grieve the second advice was that if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has portioned your sustenance then why greed the third advice was that if if every act of charity is rewarded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then why stinginess? Tonight, we shall discuss the fourth advice of our sixth holy imam. And the sixth holy imam says that if death is a reality, Imam, imam Sadiq says, if death is a reality, then why do you rejoice for whatever little you have? Why heedlessness? Why are you heedless if death is reality? Now, this was the advice of our sixth holy imam. If you come to Hadith Al-Qudsi, in Hadith Al-Qudsi, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to Musa alayhi salam, that, O oh Musa, ajibtu liman aykana bil maut, kayfa yafrah. Even Allah says the same. You see? That is, the, the, that is what the Prophet has taught us. That you take, if, if you see a Hadith, because after the death of the Prophet, there were many Ahadiths, they were invented. Factories of Hadith was opened right, by Muawiyah and others. So how would Mu'minin know that this is the, the, the real hadith? How will they know that this, this is the reliable hadith or this is the authentic hadith? They could only know when they could have matched with the verses of Quran. So now even Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says the same thing in Hadith Al-Qudsi and the hadith of Imam Sadiq also matches, it tells us. What does Allah say in Hadith Al-Qudsi? He says to his prophet Musa, he says that I am astonished I am astonished upon that person who is certain about death, yet he is yet he rejoices. He, he's, he, you can see why do you why do you rejoice? Huh? Allah says, why do you rejoice? While you are sure of when you are certain of death. Now here it doesn't mean that you, you mustn't be happy, yet it means that why are you in heedlessness while you are certain about death? Yeah. Now, Rasulullah is quoted to have said that people are asleep, Rasulullah says. Anas niyamun istaykathun idhamatu. That people are asleep. They will wake up when death knocks at their door. When they are dead, then only they will wake up. This is what Rasulullah says. Anas niyamun istaykathun idhamatu. Then, you have got, the Holy Prophet continues. He says that death, al mawtu tuhfatu mu'min. He says that death is a gift for a mu'min. Now you might be amazed that death be becoming a gift for a mu'min. Rasulullah says, death is a gift for a mu'min. Now I'll prove this with an incident which took place in the time of Bani Israel. And this is the narration from our sixth holy Imam, Imam Jafar ibn Muhammad al-Sadiq. <laughs> <laughs> 
Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. He says that there was a tribe in Bani Israel of Bani Israel, and they came to their prophet, and they said to their prophet that you pray for us, that death should not attack us. We should not be attacked by death completely. <coughs> the prophet prayed to Allah for 300 days, for 300 years. Death did not attack them for 300 years, and then they were happy initially. Eventually, what happened is that they started getting tired huh? because it would be very hard for people. It becomes extremely hard. Why it becomes hard? Because a person had to take care of his father. A person had to take care of his grandfather, a person had to take care of his great-grandfather, and then he's got his family, he's got his children, his grandchildren. Uh, the burden increased on and on and on for 300 years. Then what did they do? Again, they went to the prophet of Bani Israel, and they said to the prophet of Bani Israel, that now you pray to, to Allah that he should return to us, return us to the original state, because it is, it is very difficult for us. The, the prophet, their prophet prayed to Allah that oh Allah return to them their original state. That is why Rasulullah says that death, al mautu tuhfatu mu'min. Death is a gift for a mu'min. Now, again I bring you to Hadith Al-Qudsi. In Hadith Al-Qudsi, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the noble prophet says that it is recorded in Hadith Al-Qudsi that an angel, he comes down every day and every night. Every day or night, he comes down and he says, O oh people, O oh people, those, pe those, those of you who are in their 20s, now it's up to you, uh, to know your age and think, what is the message for you? This is Hadith Al-Qudsi, an angel comes and he says to the people, that those who are in their 20s, they should work hard. Please recite the salawat. <laughs> In Hadith Al Qudsi, the Prophet says that this is Hadith Al Qudsi that an angel comes down every day or night. And he says, that angel says, what does he say? He says that those of you who are in 20s, <coughs> the message for you is that work hard. Work hard. Those who are in their 30s, they are being told by that angel that you don't be heedless and don't be in heedlessness. Huh? Don't be carried away with whatever you have performed. Those who are in their 40s, they are being told that whatever you have gathered, soon you have to present it to your Lord. Those who are in their 50s, they are being told that you are warned, and a warning has come to you. Those who are in their sixties, the angel says to them that you, what you have, what you have ripped, soon you will sow, and soon you will see your results, and you soon you will see. There is no time for the to sow. And those who are in their seventies, they will be told that answer the call. You are being called and respond. Those who are in their eighties, they are being told that time is over. That's it. Yeah, son, that's what I was coming to. Now, I heard from somebody, which is a very good point. One of my friends told me that, Molana, do you know, whoever lives after 63 years, he has got a bonus. Why? Because the Prophet of Islam lived for 63 years, being the best of the creation. Imam Ali al Islam also lived for 63 years. And if you see the Aimmas, if you see in the list of the, our Aimmas, the Imam who had longest life was our sixth Holy Imam, who lived for 65 years. And after that, uh, Imam Zaman is exceptional. After that, you'll find that all the Imams, nobody exceeded 65 years. Imam Sadiq lived for 65 years. Which Imam lived very young, was, which Imam was martyred very young, the youngest from the list of Imams? Imam which, Kazum, which Imam? Imam Kazum, the ninth Imam. Imam. Imam Muhammad Taqi, Imam Al Jawad, he was martyred at the age of 25. Only 25 years of age, plus he assumed the office of Imam also at a very young age. 
at the age of 8. And the period of Imama was 17. So 8 plus 17 is 25. He lived for 25 years. The youngest Imam was Imam Muhammad Taqi, Imam Jawad, the ninth Imam. And the Imam who lived for very long was Imam Sadiq, who lived for 65 years. So whatever we get after 63, because the Prophet lived 63 years, it is a bonus for us. Yeah? So now, you will find that this is Hadith Al-Qudsi again. Again, we are told by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we have to think ourselves. Huh? That what do we want? In, in which category? You don't need to tell the age. Although I've heard from people saying that age is nothing but numbers. Yeah, age is nothing but numbers. But Islam says that no. Every category you are, whether you are plus 20 or you are in 20s, 30s, 40s, this is what the if this is what the message this is the message from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that if you if you are in your twenties you have to work hard. Huh? And if you are over thirties, then do not be heedless. And so on and so forth. Now, it is said that in the time of the Holy Prophet of Islam, once it happened so that a Bedouin came at the presence of Rasulullah. And he said to Rasulullah that Ya Rasulullah, teach me Quran. So the Prophet said to one of his companions, uh, that this Bedouin wants to learn Quran. Go and teach him Quran. So he, he, he went to the companions. The companions taught him Quran. When they taught him Quran, and when they, they coincidentally, they, he, they, uh, this, uh, this Bedouin was taught Surah Zilzal. Now we all know the end of Surah Zilzal is فَمَنْ يَعْمَلْ مِثْقَالَ ذَرَّةٍ خَيْرًا يَرَى وَمَنْ يَعْمَلْ مِثْقَالَ ذَرَّةٍ شَرًا يَرَى which means that every act, every good act, at the size of an atom, you'll get the reward if you do good acts. And at the size of an atom, if it is, it is committed bad, then Allah will punish you. That Bedouin Arab, when he came across these verses of Quran, he says to the Holy Prophet, he says to the, to the companions of the Prophet, that this is what Quran says? The companions said, yes. He says, تَقْفِنِ هَذِهِ ayah. He says, then, for me, this is sufficient. This is enough. I don't want to learn more. I don't want to recite more verses. I will take these verses, and I will implement. And he left. Rasulullah asked them, what happened? Where is your student? And they said that, Ya Rasulullah, this transpired. They said the whole story. Rasulullah remarked, commented. Rasulullah said that this person, when he came, eh, he was a jahil. But when he left, he left as a jurist. He left as a faqih. If a person understands this, that for every action you will be asked about, for every action, and you have to die, and for every action we are responsible and we are answerable, if a person understands this, then a person will not commit evil, or he won't do zulm on others. But a person does, he oppresses others because he forgets Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because he forgets death, because he forgets the day of judgment. Mm -hmm. That is why he's, he, he oppresses others. It is said, this, this is a, a story which I was told by a madrasa teacher very long. And he told us, I found it very interesting. He says that long ago, there was an old man who was blind. He could not see. And he had four sons. Now those four brothers, they were married, they were staying together. And they were, all were married, they had their wives. Now because that old person was becoming old, and old people then slowly, slowly, gradually, they become like children. So, he starts, because of his old age, because of his advanced age, uh, he, he had those things which those women, those wives of those brothers, they got tired. So they planned all together, <coughs> they decided, they said that we will teach our husbands that they should take their father and they should throw him in the sea. <coughs> so that we should get rid of the father. Now this was their plan. And the husbands agreed. Now the father was old because he could not see. He said, fine. They carried the father and the father could not see also. So they carried, they were about to go. When they were about to go to the sea, the father said that, where are you taking me? Although he could not see. He said, where are you taking me? And those people, they said that, nowhere, we are just taking you somewhere. They were carrying him. So the father is saying that, are you taking me to the sea? Are you going to throw me in the sea? They said that, how did you know? Did you hear us? They said that, no. The father said that, I've not heard you. But I did the same to my father. <laughs> I did the same to my father. Because I did the same to my father, history repeats itself. 
that I thought so, that you are going to throw me. The children got scared and they took the father and they sent back they sent the father back home. They said that we are scared that we our our sons should not do the same to us. Yeah? So that is why This is a very good, it, it's a golden law of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's a Quranic law. That whatever you do, you will be, if it is good, you will be you'll be gifted, you'll be rewarded for it. If it is bad, if it is an evil, then you'll be punished. And you have to face the consequence. Whatever you do. Even the act is as small as an atom. If it's good, you'll be rewarded. The act which is small as an atom, or bad as an atom, you will be punished. It is said that long ago, you know, there are some people that have got this bad habit of hitting their wives. There was one person who was hitting his wife <coughs> while, while the husband and the wife were quarreling. They were fighting, and to that extent that he hit his wife, now he became so angry, he came to that extent that he, he in that anger, in that stage of anger, that he killed his wife. Now, when he killed his wife, what happened is that he was worried. He came out of his house, uh, and he was smoking, and he was thinking that what will I reply to the parents of my wife? What will I reply to my in-laws? I've already killed her. So he was standing outside and smoking, and all of a sudden, a person passed. When a person passed, the person asked him, you seem to be worried. He says, yes, I am. He says, can, can we share? What is your problem? Perhaps I can help you. He says, he, he explained him that I, because I fought with my wife, now I killed her. Now I'm thinking, what will I, what will I reply my in-laws? This person says, don't worry. Wait here. If you come across anybody, take him, kill him. After you have killed him, take his corpse, take his body, his dead body, and just put besides the, your wife who is dead. And then, you tell your in-laws that these people, these two, they had bad relation. And I met them, I saw them, I caught them red-handed, that they were committing evil, yeah, they were committing adultery. That is why I killed. Because obviously it's human, and I could not see, I could not bear, I killed them. He says, yeah, it's a good idea. He did what he was told. He said, he killed. And then he took that young man, the dead body, and he kept beside his wife. This person who gave this idea, he went back home. That night, his son never turned up. His son never turned up. He waited and waited and waited, but his son never turned up. Later on, he found the young man who was killed was his own son. Yeah? So this is what it happens. This is what it happens. A person, at the moment, he thinks that it won't come back to me. Huh? But if you do bad, it will come back to you. When you do good, you are not doing good to anybody else. You are doing good for yourself. This is Quranic law. In ahsantum, ahsantum falaha. Wa in asa'atum. Huh? If you do good, you have done, we have done good for yourself. If you do, you have done bad, you have done bad for your own nafs. Whatever good you do, you will see it yourself. You will see it yourself. And do know that death is something, it's a reality. That nobody can deny. Death is a reality. No one can deny. It will come. And that is what Imam Sadiq teaches us. That if death is reality, this is the fourth advice today. If death is reality, then why heedless? Why in heedlessness? And why do you rejoice with whatever little you have? It is said that when at the presence of Dawood, Malikul Mot had a deal with Dawood. Nabi Dawood. Nabi Dawood had a deal with Malikul Mot. He said to Malikul Mot that before you come and seize my soul, please notify me. Give me signal so that I should know that I'm about to die. It was a deal. But when his time came, <coughs> Malikul Mot came to seize his soul. And when they greeted each other, Dawood says to Malikul Mot that have you come to greet me or you have come to seize my soul? Malikul Mot says, no, I've come to seize your soul. But did I tell you that you inform me, signal me, notify me? He says, I gave you so many notifications. Then Malikul Mot says that the fact that your father died, it is a notification. The fact that your brother died, it is a notification. I notified you. 
your neighbors died, it, 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 your family members died. This is a notification by itself. I notified you. We think that that is only for neighbors. It's not for us. No. When our beloved, our family member, our fathers, our parents die, this is a, sim a signal for us. Malik al is giving a signal. Well, the other riwayas I've seen, it says that even this gray hair, this gray hair which you see, this itself is a signal of death. We are being notified that soon, or soon you'll come to us now. Uh, the time has come. The time has come. You know. Please recite the salawat. <laughs> Sometimes you'll get a phone call that a particular person passed away. He was completely healthy. Huh? Completely healthy. And a person who is very old, he is on the bed for years, he still survives. See the Muslim of Allah. And the person who is completely healthy, he died. What happened? I was just talking to him. He passed away. He got a, a heart attack and he passed away. <laughs> Isn't it? That's what it happens. Yeah? And I had a friend in Dar es Salaam. Uh, he was an old person. We used to ask him his age. He would say that, no, I won't tell my age. How old is it? No, no. He said, but people, somebody will hear. Who will hear? He said, no, somebody will hear. Who will hear? Malikul Mot will hear. If Malikul Mot will hear, uh, then he will seize my soul. Because I'm already 80 years. Uh, and I understand, he says, I believe my file is lost up there. <laughs> Otherwise, I would have reached to Kabrastan very long ago, because I am eight years. He said, but we are alone. He says, no, my political vote is the third person. He will listen to what we are speaking. Uh, that's, what, that's what we think sometimes, isn't it? But we, if it is decreed, death will come. Uh, to Ibrahim, salam, even when Malik al-Mot came, and Malikul Mot, uh, Ibrahim say that, oh, Malikul Mot, have you come to visit me? Or have you come to seize my soul? He says, now it's time. It's time. I've come to seize your soul. Now, we all know that Ibrahim, alayhi salam, was Khalilullah. Ibrahim was Khalilullah, which means the friend of Allah. So Ibrahim says to Malikul Mot that I am the friend of Allah. Will a friend kill a friend? So now Malikul Mot he raised his hands and he said to Allah, that oh Allah, look at your Ibrahim. Your Ibrahim, your prophet, your messenger is saying, this is his message, this is the message from him. So Allah replies, he says, oh Malik, what tell him? Will a friend, huh, no, don't feel, he won't he feel to meet another friend? Because when it, is a, when it is death, then you will meet me. Doesn't he feel like meeting me? So you, you can imagine for a moment that when death comes, even the prophets, they were asking that is this our time for us to go now? Even prophets like Ibrahim, Prophet Dawood, Suleiman, uh, and you all know the story of Suleiman. There was one person, he was 90 years of age, very old, very old. And he passed away. When he passed away, his family members like other family members, they started weeping. And the neighbors and other family friends, the relatives, they came, they came to console him. They said that do not weep. And while consoling, it came out from their mouth. They said that after all, he was 90 years of age. So at least you thank Allah that he was blessed with a very long life. So they said that we are not crying because he left us. We are crying that now Malik al has known our address. That is why we are weeping. Malikul Mot, he himself, when he was given this task by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he was given this task, hmm, he said that, oh Allah, people will blame me. Uh, people will start, they will curse me, ya Allah. On hearing this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, don't worry. You won't kill them, you won't seize their soul directly. Your name won't come out. Uh, you won't be blamed. Because even in humans, we don't want to be blamed. Hmm? We don't want to take responsibility. No one wants to take responsibility. Even children don't want to take responsibility. Have you seen your child when you are sitting at home? And if they broke a TV, and they'll tell you, no, I didn't break the TV. The ball broke the TV. But who threw the ball? Isn't it? So no one wants to take responsibility. So Malikul Mot also said that 
I'll be cursed. I'll be blamed. Allah said that no. You won't attack them directly. You will you will seize their soul indirectly. Thus it will always the, it, it will, the talk will come if somebody dies. It will say that he either died out of accident, he either passed away of a disease, he either passed away of cancer, he either passed away of heart attack, whatever. Right? There'll be there'll always be a suburb. There'll be a suburb. Please recite the salawat. Our first holy Imam, it is said that when he was seated on the pulpit in Masjid Kufa, yeah, and he was delivering a sermon. Besides him, besides him, next to the pulpit, Abdul Rahman ibn Mulji was seated. And when Imam Ali alayhi salam was delivering a sermon, Abdul Rahman ibn Mulji was saying, and these people regularly they would hear Abdul Rahman ibn Mulji saying, what was he saying? He was saying that, Wallah. I will snatch you from these people, Abdul Rahman ibn Mujib was saying. So once, when the people, when the, the, the lovers of Ali alayhi salam, they caught Abdul Rahman ibn Mujib, and they brought to Imam Ali alayhi salam, and they said that, Ya Ali, this person, he said that, Wallah, I'm going to snatch Amir al mumin Ali alayhi salam, from the people. You know what did Ali alayhi salam reply? Ali alayhi salam said, release him. There is a shield. A strong shield on top of me, over me. And that shield no one can release. If it can only be released by Ajal. Amir al says that everybody here is secured with his Ajal. Until that Ajal comes, then only a person will die. Ajib, eh? Amir al says that I am secured and I am protected over me with by a shield. And, that, and when my time comes, that shield will hand over me to the death. And then at that time, neither an arrow can miss its target, nor a wound, nor a wound can, he can be healed, if time comes, Amir al says. So everybody is secured and protected with his ajal. If the time comes, Quran says, لا يستقدمون ساعتهم ولا يستأخرون. If time comes, even one moment, لا يستقدمون ساعتهم ولا يستأخرون. Even one moment won't move forward, and one moment won't move, won't go backwards. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has destined, it all depends upon the time. When time reaches, no one can do anything. This is death. And that is why our sixth holy imam poses a question as, as an advice. He says that if death is a reality, then why rejoice in whatever little you have? Why do you rejoice? Why are you heedless? Imam al-Sadiq, salatullahi wa salam alayhi Now, when, why are we heedless? Allah says. And again in Quran and Majid also, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala poses a question. What does Allah say? Allah says, He says in Surah, Ambiya, the very first verse of Surah Ambiya. Iqtaraba lil nasi hisabuhum, wa hum fi ghaflatim mu'ridun. What does it mean? It means that the time of hisab has come very closer. Iqtaraba lil nasi hisabuhum, wa hum fi ghaflatim mu'ridun. And people are in ghafla while they are turning away their heads. People are in ghafla. See, there are some things, ghafla means heedlessness. There are some things we are in heedless. Huh? There are some things in, in relation to things like we are heedless of what are we heedless of? We are heedless of our life, our umr. This umr which we are given, we are heedless of it. Huh? Time passes, but what have we done? Have we said and have we thought the way our aimas have taught us that hasibu kabla to hasibu? You account your deeds before you are brought to account. Have we sat and thought, hmm? uh, why are we heedless of our own, of this blessing which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us, he has blessed us. There was a farmer uh, and he was always complaining. What was he complaining about? He was complaining about his financial situation. His financial situation was not good. He used to complain. Once while farming, uh, he, uh, he came across a treasure. When his ex went down, he came across a treasure 
And when he saw a treasure, he asked all about. Uh, he asked all the people in the town to his neighborhood that can you buy this treasure from me? He wanted money. So the people say that we cannot buy. They told him that perhaps you go to the king. The king, who he could buy. The king kept a condition that I am giving you two hours. We have come to my palace, leave the treasure here. I am giving you two hours. Whatever you want, you take it from my palace. Whatever you want, but only it's two hours. Now this person thought, ah, it's two hours. It's very long. So he opens the first room of the king. He sees the pearls, the diamonds. The second room he opens, he sees gold and silver. The third room he opens, because now it was open for him. And he was independent. He could use whatever he wanted. He could utilize whatever he wanted. The, four, the third room he opens, he sees the bag of the king. And he says, wow, I'm lasting. I, 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 was, I, I had this... I, I, I had this uh, aspiration uh, that I should sleep on the bed of the king. And he says, let me sleep here. He sleeps there. And while he sleeps there, two hours pass. The soldiers come and they tell him, Baba, time is up. You have to go. Time is up. And he says, wait, give me some time. I was given an opportunity that I should take whatever I want. I go, give me some time. The soldiers will say, no. Just think of yourself. Same applies to us. When Malikul Mot will come, Suleiman alayhi salam, he requested, because he was standing, Suleiman, and I want to give you the story of Suleiman, you know. He must have heard. That he was standing with his staff, and, and Suleiman requested that give me some time. At least I should sleep. Malikul Mot said, no, it is the hukm of Allah, that I should seize your soul like this only, so I should sit. No. Do you know Suleiman passed away while he was standing? And his, he was holding his staff. And the subjects, and you know he was there, he had the power, the dabdaba, the subjects went on working hard for Suleiman. And all of a sudden, uh, when they saw that the termites and the worms, they were eating the staff of Suleiman, and he lost the balance when he fell down, that is where they understood that Suleiman passed away. That also, people had different opinions. The different opinions. Some thought that Suleiman is good. Because how can a person stand for so many days? But he was standing with the, uh, with, with the help of his staff. Some said, no, maybe Suleiman is a sorcerer. He's a magician. Uh, but some said, no, he's an Nabi Allah. He's the prophet of Allah. Maybe Allah gave him the power of standing. But that is how he passed away. He was not even allowed, he was not permitted even to sit. Let alone to sleep, even to sit. No. His soul was seized while he was standing. Same applies to us. We are blessed with all these bounties. We, could, we can do whatever we want. But again, it depends upon us. How are we utilizing this umr of ours? How are we utilizing this time which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us? What else? What else? We are heedless of. What else? We are heedless of our, of our enemy. And that enemy is shaitan. That enemy is ourselves. Amirul Mu'mineen Ali ibn Abi Talib, salawatullahi wa salamu alaykum. He says the greatest enemy of a person is himself. And that is our nafsi ammar abissu. We are heedless of our nafs. And this nafs is making us to commit sins. Yeah? Especially nafsi ammar. Remember there are three types of nafs. Nafsi lawama. Nafsa mutmainna and nafsa ammara bisu. Nafsa mutmainna is nice. Ya ayyatuha nafsul mutmainna. Irjiri ila rabbiki radiyatan mardiyya. Fadkhuli fi ibadi wadkhuli jannati. Which is mentioned in Surah Fajr. It is also for Imam Hussain alayhi salam. Then now come back to me. Ya ayyatuha nafsul mutmainna. Then you've got nafsa lawama. Yeah, which always repents and regrets and blames you. Yeah, this shak. We get shak. It is through nafsa lawama. And then you've got Nafsi Ammara Bisu. Nafsi Ammara Bisu, it commands you and it insists you to do evil. This is called Nafsi Ammara Bisu. It commands you towards evil. It is said that Nafsi Ammara Bisu, which we are not aware of, but it is our greatest enemy, ourselves, our nafs, our greatest enemy. It is said, do you know how Yahya was killed? Huh? Yahya, the prophet, Yahya. He has got three similarities, like the Prophet Muhammad What are those three similarities? 
the first similarity, the first similarity is that both of them, their, their name was unique. Yahya's name was unique, according to Quran, Hussein's name was unique. Both of these personalities, they stayed in their mother's no. womb for six months. No. And the third similarity is that both of them, they were killed brutally. They were murdered brutally. And both of them, for both of them, the heavens wept blood for them. The heavens cried for them. For Yahya and for Hussein ibn Ali alayhi salam. Now, in the time of Yahya, there was a king. There was a king. And he had a stepdaughter. The queen wanted his daughter, the queen wanted that her daughter should stay in her line so that she should get the power after her. So what she did is that she told the king that why don't you marry my daughter, your stepdaughter. Your stepdaughter? King's, queen's daughter. Queen's her own daughter. She brought her own daughter. So the king said, let me ask Nabi Yahya, what does Sharia say? If Yahya agrees, I will marry. But if Yahya does not agree, I won't marry. So he goes to ask Yahya to take the opinion of Yahya. Nabi Yahya refused. Nabi Yahya said that you can't marry your, step your stepdaughter. Your stepdaughter is your own daughter. You can't marry her. She's your mahram. So when Queen came to know, she becomes angry. She becomes angry. What she does? She dresses her daughter in a brief, scanty clothes. And when she dresses her daughter in a brief, and she brings her with brief, scanty clothes, and when the king was tempted, out of that sexual desires, overflow of sexual desires, he wants to go forward, and the queen says, wait, you can't have her. You want to have a female? He says, yes, bring the head of Yahya. So the king goes to the advisors, and he says to the advisors, that shall I bring, shall I kill Yahya? The advisors say, no, don't do that. If you do that, the blood will go on flowing on and on and on. Do not kill Yahya. But due to overflow of sexual desires, he killed Yahya. And when the, when the head of Yahya was brought in a silver tray, the head of Yahya was brought in a silver tray. Yeah? And that is where Imam Sajjad says that our, my father, Imam Hussein, <coughs> on our way to Sham, he always, he always narrated to us, he used to narrate to us the story of Yahya. And how he was killed. He said there's similarity. And, and that's how Yahya was killed. Yahya was killed due to the, that, that khahishat haymani, that animalistic desires. <coughs> due to nafse ammara bisu, due to overflow of sexual desires. Can you understand now where the concept of hijab comes in? Nowadays people, they tell you that why hijab? No, if you don't do hijab, of the, the overflow of sexual desires enters in. And a person can kill others just because of the overflow of sexual desires. Thus, a person needs to be very careful. Death. A guru Beja Muhammad Ali Muhammad. Malikul Mot ke baare mein milta hai ke jab Quran kehta hai ke kad aflaha man tazakka wa zakar asma rabbihi fasalla. بل تؤثرون الحياة الدنيا والآخرة خير وأبقى يعني كيا قرآن كهتا ہے کہ بے شک قد افلح من تزکا جو بھی جس نے بھی اپنے آپ کو پاک کیا پیوریفائی کیا وہ کامیاب ہے قد افلح من تزکا وذکر اسم ربی ہی فصلہ دوسری چیز قرآن کہتا ہے کہ خدا کو یاد کرے اور نماز بھی پڑھے پھر قرآن کہتا ہے بل تؤثرون الحياة الدنیا آیا تم حیات دنیا کو ترجیح دیتے ہو پرائیوریٹی دیتے ہو والآخرت خیر ہوا اب کا آخرت خیر ہے اور ہمیشہ کے لیے ہے جاویدان ہے آخرت قرآن ہمیں سمجھاتا ہے اب دیکھئے آپ دیکھیں گے کہ ایک نو جوان زیادہ تر جوانی میں انسان جو ہے نعمتوں کا زیادہ استفادہ کر سکتا ہے برہاپے میں نہیں جوانی میں لیکن پھر بھی آپ دیکھیں گے کہ جوان جو ہے اپنی جوانی کو وہ قربان کرتا ہے دوسرے ملک میں جاتا ہے درس حاصل کرتا ہے کیوں؟ تاکہ اچھی زندگی ان کو ملے لیکن قرآن کہتا ہے قرآن کیا کہتا ہے کہ جب بھی دنیا اور آخرت آپس میں ٹکرائے تو تم آخرت کو چنو کیوں؟ قرآن کہتا ہے بل توفرون الحیات الدنیا والآخرت خیر ہوں ابکا بہت سی جگہ پہ 
دو چیز ٹکراؤ میں آ جاتی ہے آخرت اور دنیا تو انسان کیا کرے انسان آخرت کو لے دنیا کو بھول جائے یہ قرآن نے ہمیں سمجھایا ہے اب آپ دیکھیں مالک الموت کے بارے میں ملتا ہے قرآن یہ کہتا ہے ولو کن تم فی وروج مشیدا تم جہاں پہ بھی ہو جہاں پہ بھی ہو مالک الموت ضرور آئے گا ضرور تمہیں پائے گا اگر وقت آ گیا تو ملک الموت تمہیں تمہیں تمہاری روح کو قبض کر لے گا اس کے بارے میں رسول اللہ نے ایک مرتبہ رسول اللہ جو بھی بولتے تھے نا وہ وحی الہی ہوا کرتی تھا ایک مرتبہ مسجد النبوی میں رسول اسلام بیچے ہوئے تھے اور رسول اسلام نے اپنے اصحاب سے کہا کہ آیا آپ چاہتے ہیں کہ میں آپ کو ایک واقعہ سناؤں ایک قصہ سناؤں تو اصحاب نے کہا آپ ہمیں واقعہ سنائیں قصہ سنائیں کالو بلا رسول اللہ نے فرمایا کہ ایک مرتبہ ایک شخص تھا وہ بھاگتا تھا جب ان کو پتا چلا کہ ملک الموت ان کے پیچھے بھاگ رہا ہے تو وہ امان میں نہیں تھا پریشان تھا پریشان حال تھا لہذا وہ بھاگنے لگا بھاگنے لگا وہ سوچتا تھا کہ ملک الموت مجھے چیس کر رہا ہے میرا سب سے بہترین دوست کون ہے بہترین دوست کے پاس جاؤں تاکہ وہ مجھے پناہ دے لہذا وہ سوچنے لگا وہ اپنے بہترین دوست کے پاس گیا انہوں نے دروازے کو دکل باب کیا بہترین دوست نے فرسٹ بیسٹ فرینڈ اس نے دروازے کو کھولا اس نے کہا کیا ہے ایسا نظر آتا ہے ایسا معلوم ہوتا ہے کہ تم بہت پریشان ہو تمہارا چہرہ زرد ہو گیا ہے کہا میں پریشان ہوں کیوں تمہاری پریشانی کیا ہے کہا ملک الموت میرے پیچھے ہے اس لیے میں لڑتا ہوں آئے تم مجھے پناہ دو گے بس یہ سننا تھا کہ اس دوست نے دروازے کو بند کر دیا اس نے کہا نہیں اب میری اور تیری دوستی ختم ہم دوست ہوا کرتے تھے اب ہم دوست نہیں ہیں تو یہ رونے لگا یہ کہنے لگا کہ میں نے تمہارے لیے اے دوست میرے میں نے سب کچھ کیا تمہارے لیے آج جب میں پناہ مانتا ہوں تو تم دروازے کو بند کرتے ہو کہا اب ہمارا رشتہ ختم بس یہ سوچنے لگا کہ میں دوسرے دوست کے پاس جاؤں سیکنڈ فیوریٹ فرینڈ سیکنڈ بیسٹ فرینڈ تو یہ دوسرا دوست کے پاس جا رہا ہے دوسرے دوست کے پاس جا رہا ہے تو وہ بھی دکل باب کرتا ہے دروازے کو کھولتا ہے پھر کہتا ہے کہ کیا ہے پریشا حال نظر آتے ہو کہا دیکھو میرے پیچھے مالک الموت آ رہا ہے اور میں پناہ چاہتا ہوں تو اس نے کہا کہ دیکھو آؤ میرے گھر کے اندر بیٹھو تھنڈا پانی پیو پریشان مت ہو میں ملک الموت کی انٹری تو نہیں روک پاؤں گا ان کی انٹری تو ہوگی لیکن یہاں تک میں تمہیں مدد کر سکتا ہوں کہ تمہارے ساتھ میں قبرستان تک آؤں گا اپنے ان ہاتھوں سے میں تمہیں ساتھ میں دفنا ہوں گا لیکن تمہارے ساتھ نہیں سوؤں گا قبر تک نہیں آؤں گا پھر میں چلا جاؤں گا تو یہ رونے لگا اس نے کہا تم مجھے امید نہیں تھی توقع نہیں تھا تم سے یہ کیسی دوستی تم ادا کر رہے ہو میں نے سوچا کہ تم میری مدد کرو گے لیکن تم نے کہا تم میری مدد کرنے کے لیے بالکل تیار نہیں بلکہ تم تو کہتے ہو کہ تم مجھے تمہارے ہاتھوں سے مجھے دفنا ہو گے اور مجھے کب میں تنہا چھوڑو گے یہ کون سی دوستی ہے لہٰذا وہ وہاں سے چلا گیا روٹھ روٹ کے اس نے کہا کہ میں اب تیسرا بیسٹ فرینڈ کو ڈھونڈوں تیسرا بیسٹ فرینڈ کو ڈھونڈنے لگا اس کے گھر پہ گیا اس نے دکل باب کیا اس تیسرے بیسٹ فرینڈ نے دروازے کو کھولا کہا آؤ اندر ریلیکس پریشان مت ہو جب اس نے اس کو پتا چلا دوست کو کہ یہ ملک الموت پیچھے ہے کہا پریشان مت ہو میں تمہارے ساتھ ہر جگہ آؤں گا تمہارے ساتھ قبر میں رہوں گا پورے سراخ میں ہم ساتھ میں وقت کریں گے اگر حتیٰ حساب بھی ہم ساتھ میں دیں گے حتیٰ جن حتیٰ وہ موقع آئے گا وہ نو بتائے گی کہ تم جنت میں جاؤ گے جنت میں بھی ہم تمہارے ساتھ آئیں گے تم پریشان مت ہو اس کے بعد رسول اللہ اب رسول اللہ پوچھتے ہیں اپنے اصحاب سے کہ آیا آپ لوگوں نے پہچانا کہ یہ تین دوست کون ہے کون ہے یہ تین دوست رسول اللہ نے بھی سوال کیا تھا کہ یہ تین دوست کون ہے پہلا دوست ہے پہلا دوست وہ ہے مال ہے جب انسان مر جاتا ہے تو پھر مردہ کا اور مال کے ساتھ کچھ رشتہ نہیں ہوتا ہے کچھ رشتہ نہیں سب وارثوں کے پاس جاتا ہے نہیں فقط ون تھرڈ ملتا ہے ایک تہائی ملتا ہے وہ بھی کفن وغیرہ یہ سارے بندوبست انسان کرے ان کے ان کے مال سے دوسرا دوست رسول نے پوچھا آپ نے پہچانا اولاد قبرستان تک آئے گی اور تیسرا دوست عمل 
अमल हर जगह आएगा तुम्हारे साथ पूरे सिरात में भी अमल आएगा हा? हर जगह सिरात में पता नहीं हिसाब में कब्र में हर जगह माल तुम्हारे साथ आएगा इसलिए हमसे कुर्सी में खुदा कहता है अजीब तो लिमन आई कैन बिल मौत कई फरा अजीब तो दुनिया कई फायतमा मुझे बहुत ताजुब होता है उस इंसान पर कि वो देखता है कि दुनिया पीच बदलती है दुनिया रंग बदलती है है ना कल जो बहुत मालदार थे आज फकीर हो गए कल जो फकीर थे आज मालदार बन गए लेकिन फिर भी इंसान जो है इस दुनिया पर तो रखता है फिर भी इंसान इस दुनिया पर बहुत उम्मीद रखता है कई फायतमा अजीब तो लिमाइन अजीब तो लिमन आई का ना बिल हिसाब कई फायुगने मुझे बहुत ताजुब होता है जिसको यकीन है हिसाब पर फिर भी वो गुनाह करता है अल माल वल बनून जीना तो हाया तो दुनिया वल बाकिया तो साले हाथ कुरान कहता है कि माल और अवलाद फक्त दुनिया की जीनत है अल माल वल बनून जीना तो हाया तो दुनिया तो फिर दुनिया की जीनत है फक्त मार और मार � तो हम क्या करें फिर कुरान कहते हैं वल बाकिया तो साले हाथ जो चीज हमेशा रहने वाली है वो नेक अमल है साले हाथ अमल साले वो हमेशा हमेशा मानदनी है वो हमेशा के लिए रहेगी अमल साले इसीलिए खत्म मर्तबत अहमद मुस्तफा मोहम्मद मुस्तफा सल्लल्लाहु अलैहि वसल्लम उनके जमाने में जब जंग हो रही थी और उनका एक सहाबी था जिसका नाम था सुहेब रूमी सुहेब रूमी ने एक मुशरिक को कत्ल किया बहुत सख्त था मुशरिक को कत्ल करना वो वो मुशरिक को और उन्होंने उस मुशरिक को कत्ल किया तो लोगों ने कहा कुछ लोग गए रसूल के पास कहने लगे कि हमने उस मुशरिक को कत्ल किया और कुछ लोग आए दोबारा सुहेब से कहने लगे कि आपको पता है आपने कत्ल किया लेकिन नाम उन लोगों का जा रहा है ऐसा होता है ना काम हमारा नाम तुम्हारा ऐसा होता है तो ये अपना नाम देते हैं तो सुहेब रूमी ने कहा कोई बात नहीं मेरा खुदा तो जानता है हा? मेरा खुदा जानता है मेरा रसूल भी जानता है कि मेरे अमल क्या है बस हमें भी ऐसा ही होना चाहिए कि हमारे अमल जो है हमें खुश होना चाहिए क्योंकि हमारे आखिर इमाम आखिर सरकार इमाम अली फरमाते हैं कि बंद बंदे खुदा की पांच निशानियां हैं हमारे आखिर सरकार फरमाते हैं बंदे खुदा की पांच निशानियां हैं वो कहते हैं कि पहली निशान ये है इधा आहसन इस तक्षर जब भी वो नेक काम करते हैं तो वो खुश होते हैं वो कहते हैं अलहमदुल्ला मैं वो ये नेक काम कर सका फिर दूसरी निशानी सबर हूं जब भी वो मुसीबत में मुबिला होते हैं तो सब्र करते हैं तीसरी निशानी जब भी वो गुनाह करते हैं तो इस्तफार करते हैं चौथी निशानी जब भी खुदा उनको अता करता है तो शुक्र करते हैं और पांचवी निशानी ईदा गजब यानी कि जब भी वो गजबनाक होते हैं तो आफ करते हैं बख्श देते हैं कोई भी यहां नहीं कह सकता है कि वो गजबनाक नहीं होता अगर कोई गजबनाक होता ही नहीं तो इंसान नहीं है इंसान के इंग्रेडिएंट्स में आग मिट्टी पानी और हवा इंसान के इंग्रेडिएंट्स में कि इंसान आग से बना हुआ है तो इंसान गजबनाक होता है लेकिन गजबनाक होने के बाद इमाम रिजा फरमाते हैं ये बंदे खुदा की निशानी है कि वो दूसरे को माफ करे इधा गजब मोहतरम सामे तो ये चौथी एडवाइस है चौथी नसीहत है हमारे छठे सरकार के इमाम जाफर मोहम्मद इमाम फरमाते हैं कि अगर मौत हकीकत है एक हकीकत है तो फिर इंसान क्यों गफलत में है मौत तो आने वाली है तो इंसान नेक बने इंसान साले बने और दुनिया पर तो न करे ये सारी चीज जो है अजीब तो लिमन आई का नाम तकल्लुब दुनिया कई फैसमाइन हुई नहीं था वो देखता है कि दुनिया पीच बदलती है फिर भी वो इतमान रखता है इस दुनिया पर हाँ जादारो इमाम हुसैन ने भी यही फरमाया था इमाम हुसैन ने क्या कहा इमाम ने कहा कि अन्नासु अभी दु दुनिया व दीन लयकुल भी अलसी रहते हैं लोग दुनिया के गुलाम है अन्नास अभी दुनिया और दीन लक लक जबान बन गया 
या तो इमाम ने यह फरमाया करबला में जब करबला की तरफ जाते थे खतिया इमाम फरमाते हैं कि दुनिया की मोहब्बत हर चीज की जड़ है हर गुनाह की जड़ है दुनिया की मोहब्बत हुब दुनिया रासुकुल खतिया दुनिया की मोहब्बत ये हर गुनाह की जड़ है एंड हर गुनाह की जड़ द रूट ऑफ एवरी वाइस इज इज लव ऑफ दिस वर्ल्ड मोहतरम सामीन अगर आपको याद हो तो हमारी पहली पहली आगाज पहली पहली मजालिसों में हमने ये भी बयान किया था कि जिब्रैल अमीन ने रसूल से जब रसूल ने एडवाइस चाही तो जिब्रैल अमीन ने क्या कहा कि दो चीज को हमेशा याद रखना एक है अल्लाह और दूसरा मौत मौत को हमेशा याद रखना क्यों जब इंसान मौत को याद रखे तो गुनाह कम करेगा हाँ जादार आज माह मुहर्रम की सातवीं रात आ गई और हसम मामूल सातवीं रात शाह कासिम को याद करते हैं हजरत कौन हजरत कासिम कहते हैं कि करबला में पंचतन की तस्वीरें गई हैं जब मैं कहूं पंचतन की तस्वीरें गई यानी यानी रसूलिल्लाह की नुमाइंदगी किसने की हजरत अली अकबर शबी पैंबर अली अकबर अमीर उलमिन की नुमाइंदगी किसने की अबुल फजल अब्बास और शाह कासिम इमाम हसन के नुमाइंदे थे हाँ इमाम हसन के छह बेटे थे पांच फर्जंद इमाम हसन के करबला में शहीद हुए और एक जो बच के वापस आए जिनका नाम था हसन मुसन्ना मजरू होके वापस आए मजरू थे इंजर्ड थे हसन मुसन्ना आशूर का दिन जब नमदार हुआ एक के बाद एक जाता गया सब इजाजत चाहते थे तो हजरत कासिम भी गए अपने चचा के पास कि चचा आप मुझे इजाजत दीजिए हजरत कासिम ने भी इजाजत चाहिए लेकिन इमाम हुसैन सलाम ने कहा कि ए मेरे लाल मैं तुम्हें कैसे इजाजत दू तुम मेरे भाई की निशानी हो बोला कैसे मैं तुम्हें इजाजत दू अब अली अकबर गए और शहीद हो गए सब शोहदा अजीज अकरबा शहीद किए गए उम्मे फरवा ने कासिम से कहा ए मेरे लाल मेरे कल तुम्हें नसीहत दी अभी तक तुम नहीं गए कहा ए अम्मा मैं गया चचा के पास लेकिन चचा मुझे इजाजत नहीं देते हैं चचा कहते कि तुम मेरे भाई की निशानी हो अम्मा अली अकबर भी चले गए हम बाकी रह गए हम भी जाना चाहते हैं बस अजादारो उम्मे फरवा ने कहा ए मेरे लाल तुम्हारे बाजू पे एक तावीज है जो तुम्हारे बाबा ने बांधा था वो तावीज वो तावीज खोलो तुम्हारे बाबा ने कहा था इमाम हसन मुश्तबा ने कहा था कि एक में फरमा एक वक्त आएगा करबला में आशूर के दिन जब हुसैन पर मुसीबत आन पड़ेगी मैं नहीं होगा तब कासिम को कुर्बान करना मेरी नियाबत में उसके बाद ये तावीज को खोलना जब हजरत कासिम ने उस तावीज को खोला और तावीज को पढ़ने लगे तो वो जैसे कि एक खत था इमाम हुसैन के लिए जब इमा हजरत कासिम ने उस तावीज को पढ़ा आ गए इमाम हुसैन के पास और इमाम हुसैन के पास के इमाम हुसैन से कहने लगे ए बाबा जान ये खत आया बाबा की तरफ से एक मर्तबा मजलूम करबला ने भाई के खत को पढ़ा उसने लिखा हुआ था ए मेरे भाई हुसैन मैं तो नहीं हूं का करबला में लेकिन मेरी तरफ से मेरी जानिब मेरे लाल कासिम को तुम तुम्हारी जा तुम्हार, तु, तुम उनको कबूल करना मेरी जानिब से अजादारो तारीख बतलाती है कि खुद इमाम हुसैन सलाम ने कासिम को तैयार किया खुद इमाम हुसैन ने कासिम को तैयार किया कासिम कम सिंह थे छोटे थे उनकी उम्र ज्यादा नहीं थी फकत तेरह साल के सिन में या चौदह साल के सिन में उनको शहीद किया गया आजादारो हती घोड़े भी में घोड़े पे सवार नहीं हो सकते थे इमाम हुसैन ने उनकी मदद की जब घोड़े पे सवार किए गए इमाम ने खुद अमामा बनाया अमामा पहनाया तहतुल हनक निकाली उसके बाद कासिम से कहा जाओ बेटा जाओ खुदा हाफिज उससे पहले कासिम जाओ बीबिया से खुदा रुखसत हो लो बीबिया के पास गए कासिम फूफियों से खुदा फिज किया अम्मा से भी रुखसत हुए जब जब जंग के मैदान कारजार की तरफ रवाना हुए हाँ अजादारो तारीख बतलाती है 
کہ عمر سعاد نے ازرک شامی سے کہا ازرک شامی ایک مشہور معروف ملعون تھا جو بہت بہادر مانا جاتا تھا عمر سعاد نے کہا کہ اے ازرک شامی کو چنا اے ازرک شامی اے ازرک جاؤ یہ حسن کے شبیہ ہے جاؤ یہ حسن کی تصویر ہے ان کی بہادری حسن جیسی ہوگی بہت شجاعت ہوں گے بنی حاشم کا لال ہے بنی حاشم کا چاند ہے لہٰذا جاؤ ان کا مقابلہ کرو ازرک شامی نے توہین سمجھا کہ میں اس بچے کا مقابلہ کروں لہٰذا ازرک نے کہا میں نہیں جاؤں گا پہلے میرے بچے کو بھیجوں گا ازرک کے پاس چار فرزند تھے اس نے پہلے فرزند کو بھیجا حضرت قاسم نے ازرک کے فرزند فرزند کو واصل النار کیا دوسرے فرزند کو بیجا حضرت قاسم نے دوسرے فرزند کو بھی واصل جہنم کیا تیسرے کو بیجا تیسرے کو بھی قتل کیا چوتھے کو بیجا چوتھے کو بھی قتل کیا اب ازرک ملعون خود جا رہا ہے اب خود میدان پہ جا رہا ہے مقتل کہتی ہے مقتل نے تصویر کھینچی ہے مقتل کہتی ہے کہ امام حسین امام حسین علیہ السلام نے خود وہ جنگ دیکھی ایک مرتبہ امام حسین نے جنگ دیکھی کہ اب ازرک خود جا رہا ہے امام حسین نے اپنے ہاتھ کو بلند کیا آسمان کی طرف اور دعا کرنے لگے پالنے والے میرے قاسم کو کامیابی دے میرے قاسم کوئی مدد کر ازادارو امام حسین کی دعا مستجاب ہوئی حضرت قاسم نے ازرک کو بھی واصل جہنم کیا اب حضرت حضرت قاسم تکو تنہا رہ گئے اب بالکل تنہا ہے آپ مجھے بتائے انصاف سے بتائے کہاں تک لڑتے چودہ سال کے سن میں کم سن قاسم کہاں تک لڑتے اسی درمیان اسی دوران عمر سعید نے حکم دیا کہ اب چاروں طرف سے حملہ کیا جائے لہٰذا چاروں طرف سے حملہ کیا گیا ازادارو قاسم گوڑے پہ ڈگ مگانے لگے چاروں طرف سے حملہ کیا گیا بس ایک ملعون ایک شکی آگے بڑھا اور حضرت قاسم علیہ السلام کے پشت پہ وار کیا کہ جو پشت کی ہڈی ہوتی ہے نا وہ ہڈی ٹوٹ گئی حضرت قاسم علیہ السلام گوڑے پہ ڈگ مگانے لگے ایک مرتبہ قاسم زمین پہ گھرتے ہیں ازادارو ہر شہید جب ہر شہید زمین پہ آتا ہے ہر شہید تو ہمیشہ امام حسین کو سلام بیجتا ہے اور امام کو بلاتا ہے مدد کے لیے قاسم نے بھی امام حسین کو بلایا لیکن ہر شہدہ میں اور ہر شہدہ کے بلانے میں اور قاسم کے بلانے میں فرق ہے مقتل والے لکھتے ہیں کہ ہر شہید جب بلانے لگا میرے مولا کو تو فقط ایک مرتبہ سلام بھیجا السلام علیکہ یا عب عبداللہ اے عب عبداللہ آپ پر سلام ہو آئیے مدد کے لیے لیکن قاسم نے بار بار چچا کو بلایا اور کس طریقے سے بلایا وامہ درکنی وامہ درکنی وامہ درکنی ازادارو آیا آپ جاننا چاہتے ہیں کہ قاسم کیوں بار بار بلایا بلاتے تھے چچا آئیے مدد کے لیے چچا آئیے مدد کے لیے اہل مقاتل لکھتے ہیں کہ سب شہدہ کے گھرنے میں اور قاسم کے گھرنے میں فرق تھا آیا حسین حسین بار بار آئے نہیں حسین ایک مرتبہ آئے لیکن یہاں پہ بتیجہ بار بار بلاتا ہے چچا آئیے مدد کے لیے چچا آئیے مدد کے لیے کیونکہ جیسے جیسے ابھی قاسم کی روح ان کے بدن میں باقی تھی جیسے جیسے قاسم کے بدن کو پامال کیا جاتا تھا ویسے ویسے قاسم پکارتے تھے آئیے چچا آئیے جیسے جیسے گھوڑوں کی ٹاپو بڑھتی تھی قاسم کے بدن پر ویسے ویسے قاسم چیکھتے تھے آئیے چچا مدد کے لیے آئیے قاسم کے ناشے کو پامال کیا گیا کہ یہاں تک علماء حضرات کہتے ہیں کہ گھٹری میں حسین نے ناشے کو رکھا ازادارو حسین جب آتے ہیں اپنے بتیجے کے پاس قاسم کے پاس جب امام حسین آتے ہیں حمید ابن مسلم کہتے ہیں کہ اتنے میں 
मैंने क्या देखा कि एक गुबार उठा तो मुझे कुछ नहीं दिखा जब गुबार बैठ गया जब कुछ नहीं था तो मैंने देखा मजलू में करबला को कासिम के लाशे में पाया मजलू में करबला अपने रुखसार को कासिम के सीने पे रखा और कहने लगा ए मेरे लाल कासिम तुम्हारे चचा तुमसे बहुत शर्मिंदा है कि तुम बार बार बुलाते थे लेकिन तुम्हारा चचा तुम्हारे पास ना आ सका ए मेरे लाल मुझे बहुत अफसोस होता है अजादारो अब लाशे को हुसैन उठाए तो किस तरीके से उठाए अजादारो बड़ा इम्तिहान था मजलूम करबला के लिए करबला में यहाँ इमाम ने कासिम के लाशे को उठाया कासिम के हाथ को अपने बगल में रखा अजादारो और कासिम को खेमे की तरफ ले जाते थे कासिम के लाशे को खेमे की तरफ ले जाते थे कासिम के पांव जमीन पे घसीटते थे अजादारो मुझे पता नहीं है कि उम्मे फरवा ने अपने पामाल बेटे के लाशे को किस तरीके से देखा होगा वो भी बेवा उम्मे फरवा एक तो हमारे हसन भी मौजूद नहीं थे अब पांच के पांच बच्चे करबला में शहीद किए गए कासिम भी थे उनको भी शहीद किया गया हाँ मुझे इतना पता है यहाँ मक्तल में मिलता है कि जब कासिम के लाशे को खैमे में रखा गया बाई तरफ अली अकबर का लाशा था दाई तरफ कासिम का लाशा था मजलूम करबला बीच में बैठ गए एक दाई तरफ एक हाथ अली अकबर के लाशे पर दूसरे हाथ कासिम के लाशे पर आसमान की तरफ निकाह किया एक जुमला कहा मेरे मौला ने हे मेरे महबूद तेरा हुसैन लुट गया हे मेरे महबूद तेरा हुसैन लुट गया अल्लाह <laughs> <laughs>